Good morning, grievers and bereavers. I am Gunilak, and yes, I meant morning with a U, because today I would like to spin you the sad and quite frankly saucy tale of Doom Metal. The sound of Doom Metal can be traced back to Black Sabbath and their 1970 self-titled release. Whether or not you consider Black Sabbath themselves to be Doom Metal, they undoubtedly had a massive influence on the genre yet to come. From the guitar tone to the riffing style to the imagery associated with it, it's all still visible today. Things like wizards, witchcraft, occult rituals, the void slash oblivion, obnoxious marijuana references, wiggly words looking like a damn worm, and of course a sense of impending doom all remain staples of doom metal to this day. It is, however, interesting to note that this slow tempo and distinctive thick guitar tone was not totally intentional at first. Tony Iommi, the guitarist for Black Sabbath, fell victim to a life-changing accident at a sheet metal factory several years before the band even recorded anything. His hand got caught in the machinery and severed the tips of two of his fingers, and they fell to the floor with a crowd-pleasing squish. Howling in anguish and blinded by the intensity of the pain he was now experiencing, Tony Iommi let out a scream so loud and so powerful that it caused his consciousness to slip out of his brain and become trapped inside the two fingertips. Tony's entire body was now nothing but a couple of chunks of meat and bone, but he was not one to give up. Tony, in his new fingertip form, remained dedicated to Black Sabbath and continued to play guitar for them. Being as tiny as he was, he could only play the slowest and the simplest of riffs, but it all turned out okay in the end. The first wave of doom bands to follow in the wake of Black Sabbath seemed to favor their sound on Master of Reality more than anything, and kept their songs structurally and thematically very similar to the Birmingham-based Legends. The music was gloomy and ominous, but still held on firmly to that rock and roll edge, you know what I'm saying? These early disciples include Witchfinder General, Pentagram, and Trouble, whose career was unfortunately cut short when an old gypsy woman turned them into a board game for all eternity. Saint Vitus and Pagan Altar fit in with this group just as well, but I feel that they both evolved the doom metal sound a bit more than their peers. St. Vitus, on their self-titled debut, packed much more of a bite to their vocal style and took a fiercer approach to this somber subgenre that would later be developed into stoner doom metal by younger acts further down the line. I separate Pagan Altar for the opposite reason. They lean much closer to the traditional heavy metal style than the other bands and even had a sprinkle of folk influence that became more prominent as their discography expanded. One of the most distinguishable trends in regards to the theme of doom metal is the pessimism that nearly every band incorporates. Morbid and unhappy lyrics are unquestionably commonplace in metal, if not the standard, but doom in particular tends to focus on personal failures, disappointment, grief, and an overwhelming sense of powerlessness, whereas black metal and death metal are often outlets for power fantasies, so sort of the opposite end of the spectrum there. A black metal band might sing about constructing their kingdom of darkness, whereas a doom band would sing about watching their kingdom crumble and being unable to stop it as it turns into a big pile of goo and slime. A death metal band might sing about eating someone's lungs, whereas a doom band would sing about trying to eat someone's lungs but overcooking them and having an emotional breakdown as a result. Make no mistake, lyrical themes do not define the genre. And there is ample room to play around with any style, but there are most definitely trends that you can pick up on. Candlemass, hailing from Sweden, introduced the world to epic doom metal with their 1986 album Epicus Doomicus Metallicus, which was named after the horned Roman emperor who committed suicide by poking drumsticks into his head. Not to discredit their demo material, but every song on their demos has since been re-recorded, and neither demo is essential if you ask me. Epic Doom Metal turns its back on rock and roll in favor of a grander style, something with even more emotional weight, usually an even slower tempo and a more engulfing atmosphere than what is retroactively referred to as traditional Doom Metal. Epic Doom most notably employs an operatic vocal style of sorts, which amplifies the melodrama exponentially. Is that a bird? And is why the term epic comes into play here. Candlemass was originally the solo project of Leif Edling, because Swedish musicians thought that doom metal was a stupid idea. To quote Gustavus Adolphus himself, Goo Goo Gaga put that doom in the dumpster, end quote. However, as we all know, words can hurt, and Leif didn't enjoy being in a band all by himself. This prompted him to write the now famous song Solitude, and sprint through the streets of Stockholm shirtless while wailing the lyrics. The more that people ignored him, the more desperate and depressed Leif got. 
and the more extreme his tactics became. He began to rub his bare stomach against people's windows until finally the other members broke down and agreed to record the Candlemas debut with him. Epicus Mumicus Metallicus made a much larger impact than any of them were expecting, and Epic Doom became a household name among people who used that name in their households. Solitude Eternus, Solstice, and Sorcerer all hopped on the bandwagon with agonized frowns, and gee willikers, I am glad that they did, because Epic Doom is a wonderful subgenre. Although it never really blew up quantitatively, there's plenty of quality content to sort through, such as Funeral Circles Self-Titled, Doom Swords Replant the Corn, Wolves in the Throne Room, wait a second, no, Gatekeeper's Vigilance, with a full length in the works, ooh la la, and Altars of Oblivion's Hand Gesture of Defiance. In the early 90s, Sleep and Electric Wizard brought to life the aforementioned offshoot known as Stoner Doom. It's like regular doom metal, but written so sloppily that you need to be on drugs to enjoy it. No, there's a lot of derivative nonsense calling itself stoner doom metal, but the classics are classic for a reason. It took a few releases for these two big bubbly boys to warm up, but now Sleep is famous for their obscenely long dope smoker, Electric Wizard is famous for Dope Throne, and Cathedral is not... very... famous, at least not comparatively, but the Carnival Bazaar is... hmm... anyway... Stoner Metal, as the name implies, is a close relative to both Stoner Rock and the Stoner 63 Assault Rifle, both of which are now outclassed by developments that came after them. I am, of course, referring to Sludge, named after the greatest heist of all time when the newly formed band Crowbar was looking to suck down on some of that sweet, leafy smoke if you catch my drift, ladies and gentlemen, only to realize that they had been hoodwinked. It turns out that in the darkened streets of New Orleans, the emaciated prostitute with no fingernails and a golf ball for an eye had tricked the youthful musicians and instead of selling Crowbar some of the dankest kush on this side of the Mississippi River as she promised, she actually sold them a cauldron of Nickelodeon slime. Realizing they had been deceived, Crowbar declared their hatred for mankind and swore to let their unyielding hatred permeate everything that they touched. You heard me correctly, we're getting to the extreme doom goodies now. The subgenre named Slime wasn't selling very well, so it was later changed to Sludge. Sludge is something like a crossbreed between hardcore punk and heavier doom, and harsh vocals are easy to come by. Besides Crowbar, you can get the same tantalizing nectar of misanthropy from the Melvins, Acid Bath, and I Hate God. Or, if you're in the market for the modern variety, which tends to be even more extreme in its hatred, you can check out Black Tomb, Wit Chapter, Thou, and the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. There is also something called Death Doom, which is exactly what it sounds like. Death metal that plays much slower and thicker than the other kids. There is a plethora of good bands to check out here, such as Spectral Voice, Graveyard Ghoul, Cryptic Brood, Hooded Menace, and the Kings of Death Doom, Asphyx. Despite sounding like a preteen using a text message abbreviation to discuss asphyxiation with her middle school friends, Asphyx is one of the greatest death doom and, dare I say, death metal bands of all time. Check out their album The Rack, but, fellows and females, I'ma keep it real with you children. You're gonna want to leave all those other bands on the discount rack once you discover my high school sweetheart, the apple of my eye, the holy grail of music, my very reason for being, and all sorts of other hyperbolic and grossly exaggerated statements, my friends, Funeral Doom Metal. Funeral Doom Metal is, generally speaking, a form of extreme doom that uses death metal vocals, and tends to have a musical structure similar to that of an actual funeral dirge. The songs are long, the solos are haunting, the cover art is sometimes embarrassingly bad, Funeral Doom has got it all. There's even a gothic influence that manifests in the form of synths. From my experience, Funeral Doom tends to be pretty progressive-leaning in the elements that it uses, there's a lot of room for experimentation. But when your songs are upwards of 20 minutes long, I suppose you have to make it interesting somehow. Mournful Congregation, from the land Dan Anda, puts the fun in Funeral Doom. Check out these lads if you're picking the soundtrack for a wedding or a bar mitzvah or something, I don't know. Ahab writes concept albums based on nautical-themed novels, and always creates a wonderful complement to the books. Hell features falling blokes on the cover art, and you really want them to be okay, but are they? You just don't know, and the suspense and grief really wears you down as you listen. Also, check out Bell Witch. Shape of Despair, Morning Cloak, Lone Wanderer, Skepticism, and God, I could do a whole video on this. 
God was not a band, by the way, that was more of a blasphemous expletive, pardon me. Well, actually, God is a Romanian doom metal band, but that's not what I meant. Doom and doomy sections pop up in metal all the time, and if you trace the starting point of metal back to Black Sabbath, it's easy to see why. It's because all you need to do is play open notes on a guitar and breathe too close to your microphone and bam, you've got yourself a chart-topping extreme doom demo. But until you record that, good night, good luck, sweet dreams, goodbye. I will see you all at the gallows end. That was a Candlemas reference. I listen to doom metal. <laughs>